Oh, so you wanna know how to edit in Final Cut Pro X? Well, don't worry, because the guy in all air re er Oh, so you want to know how to edit in Final Cut Pro X? Well, don't worry, because the guy in all red is got you covered. But this isn't gonna be the normal tutorial that you always see on YouTube. It's not gonna be on one of those top 10s when they talk like they're territories. We're just gonna go quick. I'm just gonna show you the basics. And if you don't believe me that I am a Final Cut Pro master, a timeline master, then look at this. Whoa. Who could believe it? I didn't know you could clone yourself. Okay, I'd say this is enough. Let's get on to the tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Final Cut Pro X. Now what this is, is a timeline. Here are all of your clips basically mashed together. This is your project. Now if you're on your friend's account, you're probably gonna see something like this. Basically a project already created. What are those clips? I don't wanna see your face. But what if you wanted to create your own project? A good way of doing that is to delete all of his. But let's be honest, if your friend is an assassin or a manhunter, it's probably best not to delete it. What you can do instead is go right up here, go to file, go to new, go to new project. Now you name it whatever you want. I like to name it 0069, cause why not? It a funny number, in it. Okay, here we are, but there is a blank space. How do I put clips into it? What you can do is go onto YouTube and screen record some videos. As you can see here, these are mostly screen recorded. I don't know, we have the Y. If you want to add it, just drag and drop it. Now we choose the format, uh, 2K, 4K, 8K, just go with this, okay? Just, this is Hollywood. This is the frame rate that Hollywood uses. Quick line is tech tip for you. And now you've basically drag and dropped your clip into Final Cut Pro X. So I've prepared this. Okay, I didn't actually prepare it, but it's one of my projects that I have currently loaded. Now what all the peasants think is that editing is only about cutting. So if you're one of those, press B, you got choppy knife, go chop, chop, chop. Here it is, you can leave now. But if you want to get advanced, that's not the only thing about editing, I'm gonna be honest with you. So the second basic of every editor is basically scaling. So how do you scale your clips? Select the clip you want to scale, then go over here and press this. If you want to feel like a pro, you can also press this. This is like the second option for it, that pros use. But quite honestly, it's dumb and it's really hard to get to. After you press it, this pops up. Basically, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 blue circles. Now, every blue circle does something different. So basically, this is scaling up and down. If I go like this, I go up. I can do this. I can do this with this clip. If I press this, I can rotate it. Basically, you use this all the time. If I want to make the clip bigger, I just do this. You can also go here into the more advanced tab and just play with these. But transforming isn't the only scaling option. No, you also have crop and distort. Distort. Crop, as you've guessed, it, it just works like this. You can crop the video. And you also have distort. This works like this. So you can kind of move around your screen to make it seem like it's free, third dimensional. Like now it looks like it's diagonal. And if you want to go back really quickly, just press reset. Okay, third basic of editing is keyframes. Now this is kind of advanced, but you should learn it as quickly as you can. So basically, what if I wanted my clip to zoom in? So I have my normal clip, but I want to zoom into my face. What I can do is press transform, go over here and press this button. This is basically keyframing. As you can see, it selects all of these little boxes. So you can either press this button or be really precise, pressing individual buttons for every new thing. So what if you wanted to only keyframe scale Y coordinate? Don't worry, I'll explain it all to you in a sec. But let's say you want to quickly keyframe everything. Just press this and here it is. As you can see, everything's checked in. Now how do we zoom into my face? What you can do is press the right arrow. This basically moves you a frame forward. Now you make the clip bigger. 
right arrow. Scale it up, right arrow. Scale it up, right arrow. Scale it up, right arrow. So basically what this has done is created an animation on the next five frames. So if you press your arrow right, you can see it slowly moves in. If you play it, is this really nice zoom in? And this is basically the art of keyframing. Now keyframes aren't only for zoom ins, they can work for zoom outs or they can work for animations. Every time I'm pressing the right arrow to create one of these white dots. And as you can see, I've now created this. So it's really easy to use. This is actually my first time editing with keyframes. And I created this beautiful thing that you'll see in a second. Here it goes. And of course keyframing works with everything. Not only with the transform button, but also with the crop. Right arrow, boom, right arrow, boom, right arrow. And now you've created this. If you take your time, it's gonna look great. Trust me. Okay, now let's get onto playback in the video itself. How do I make my videos faster or slower? Press onto the clip, press onto this time thing. And here are all your options. You have slow, play it for 50%, slow, fast, two times faster, normal, custom, reverse, reset, speed run. Just play around with these if you got the time. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I'm just gonna show you like, let's make the clip go two times faster. And now it looks like a 90s movie. Okay, maybe not 90s, a 80s movie. Okay, four basic tip, I think it's the fourth one, is effects, audio, titles and all of the others. So over here you have the sound effects. You have the music, you have the sound effects, you have the, your garage band play files or photos, which I'm not gonna show you because they contain me. Sound effects, pick your favorite one. I like to use bottle cork, this is the pop effect. You just drag and drop it basically. Okay, real quick tip if you want to make the sound effect pop up even more, what you can do is uh, create a cheeky keyframe. This will make it look like it actually popped. See, kind of. You need to work on it a little bit for it to actually be beautiful. Over here, we have the titles. So basically here you pick all the titles. You got title. And of course you can always keyframe it to different positions so it moves. These are the generators of the preset backgrounds for your videos to put on green screens. And next, let's go on to the right. Now I've deleted this because maybe it doesn't show up for you. But all you gotta do is press this or this. These are transitions, these are effects. So effects are really easy, like just go at it basically. I don't know, go on to comic looks and then grab comic basic. Then drag and drop it on your clip and all of a sudden it's a comic book. And over here you have the advanced settings for those effects. So smoothness, so ink edges, so ink smoothness, ink fill. Wow, I've never used this effect, this actually looks sick. Style, color, gray, black and white. And what else? Look what I've created now. It actually looks like a comic book. And of course, all of these have keyframes that are to the right. But honestly, keyframing effects is a whole another story. If you want another video on it, I will do one. And over here you have the audio effects. So for example, spaces, large room. You drag and drop it, all of a sudden your clip sounds like it's been recorded in a cathedral. <laughs> I haven't said a thing in this clip, but as you can see, there is a little bit of echo. And the same as in the effects tab, you can customize all of it here. Just go on to audio, large room, amount, preset, change anything you want to, oh god. And that's basically all about effects, audio effects, generators, titles. Now let's go on to the last thing, probably one of the most important things and one of the coolest things in Final Cut Pro X masks so you can find masks in the effects tab this is a mask draw mask drag and drop it now if you do have this checked on you're not gonna see any pen or tool if you have this checked off you're gonna see this a little pen so how do masks work it's basically a crop the crop tool from photoshop itself you can just connect it and boom now what you have done is basically cropped the clip in a very serious manner, in a very precise manner. What you can do is now drag and drop this clip onto another one. So for example here, 
and we have two clips on this in the same clip. Beautiful, isn't it? And masks can be used for everything. Flying effects for cloning myself. Yes, that was done with a mask. Okay, and really quickly, let's go on to masking, but keying. I thought I'd put this into the same category, but it's basically a green screen. So as you can see, I have a screenshot here that was originally green. <laughs> and I basically want to put this frame over this video. What I can do is go onto the effects, press on keying, select the keyer, move it here, and it's keyed. It basically removes all the green. And over here you can also play with it. And that's basically Final Cut Pro X in a nutshell. If you want to hear more from me and if you want to see more tutorials, maybe some more detailed ones, I just wanted this to be a quick one, then just write it in the comments. I don't get a lot of those, so I'm probably gonna read them. Either way, this is the end. Roll the cool outro that I also did in Final Cut.